Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. And today I'm in On One Photo Raw 2022, and I'm taking a photo that was shot basically in blue hour. And what I want to do is create kind of some gentle warmth in the photo. So taking something that's pretty much blue overall and making it a bit warmer, just kind of a creative color shift, for lack of a better word. Here's the photo now. I've already got some adjustments that I've made here in Develop, and of course I've cropped it. Actually, I haven't turned those on. Uh, that's what it looks like now. So here's what it looks like before. Um, I did crop it, of course, but that's before lens correction and before any of the stuff that I've got over here in Develop. And that's my current state. You can see I did some things here with, you know, contrast and highlights and, you know, blah, blah, blah. I did not adjust temperature, but I did adjust the tint. So one more time, that's what it looked like. Very blue overall, nothing wrong with that. I, I love blue hour, in fact, but I wanted to create a warmer tone overall. So that's my first basic kind of stuff that I did over here in Develop. But what I want to do is get into effects and hit a few key things that's gonna, uh, that will allow me to basically make these adjustments. Now the first one, and this is a tool that I use a lot, and that is Photo Filter. It really just has a lot of power, a lot of control, and it lets you effectively put a color on top of your image. And so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go to a hue of about a 30, which is you know close to the reds basically, right? So this is a sliding scale of uh, the color spectrum from red all the way over to kind of like a really deep magenta. The amount is gonna be 28, and so I'm gonna bump that up a little bit. And you can see, I mean, this is having a huge impact on the overall tones of the photo. And then my saturation level is gonna be 23. So I'm gonna go about right there. And so if you look at the before and after, there it is, very blue, I mean, just blue. Nothing wrong with it, I like it. In fact, I like that red boat sticking out in the blue. But what I wanted to do is create kind of a, um, more of a sunsetty kind of feel and create some kind of a softer warm tone. Photo filter is a great way to do that. So I've started with that, but I'm going to get a few more tools that I'm going to use. The next one is sunshine, which uh, does a nice job of popping some of those kind of warmer looks. So I'm going to leave a mount at 50. I'm going to take the warmth up to about 24. So, you know, let's say about right there. And then my saturation level is seven. So I don't want to go too high. You know, I don't want to like totally act like I'm faking it, uh, but I do want that warmer kind of tone overall, as I've said uh, kind of repeatedly at this point. So if I turn off Sunshine, there it is before, and then I turn it back on, there it is now. You can see one of the things that Sunshine does, it, it does help with that warm tone, but it also, it feels to me like it creates a little bit of a glow in the highlights. So one more time, there it is before, and there it is after. It gives it a nice little pop, which um, I like quite a bit. So one thing I want to do, though, is get Tone Enhancer and kind of play around with some of these tones. And so I'm going to start with Contrast. I'm going to go to about a 15 or 16 here. So something about like that. I do want to pull the highlights back. Um, I feel like the highlights are getting a bit bright, so I'm going to pull that down. And I go like negative 80, so let me get to that. There you go. And then I bump up the shadows about a 13. So for me, this is kind of massaging the light and trying to get it look... Uh, looking the way I want it to look. So at that point, I was like, hey, I kind of like this. You know, this is coming around. I like it. There's a couple things I still might want to do, but there it was before, and there it is now. So a little bit uh, more balanced overall light look, and what I want to do is add some dynamic contrast. Now, the reason I'm using this is because I want to smooth out the sky and the water. So usually when I do that, I'm usually going about a negative 40 or so on each of these settings. And I'm just going to drag those down there. And then what I want to do is get into masking. And I'm going to use AI Quick Mask, which allows you to basically come in and uh, highlight certain areas and either include them or not include them in this mask. So because it's negative and I want to uh, keep that negative stuff in the water and the sky, that means when I'm in drop mode, I want to drop that from the land mass. So I just kind of wipe over that with the red and I'm basically telling it, do not apply these negative dynamic contrast measurements to the things that I'm marking in red. Now, if I can find the right key, yeah, there it is. Uh, I'm gonna come in here and I just wanna include the boats uh, in this, uh, what, what you call drop, just kinda at least the, uh, you know, the chassis, for lack of a better word, of the boat. Um, and then I'm gonna come in and say keep, and once again, I'm gonna right bracket key to increase the size of my mouse. And I'm just gonna green up the sky and the water. So the water is gonna get green here. And all I'm saying is, hey, on one, 
you know, the green stuff, I want this negative dynamic contrast to apply to, and the red stuff, I do not. So once you have that ready, you just hit apply, and it'll automatically calculate the mask and apply it for you. And there you go. I mean, honestly, I didn't even touch that other than the, the red and green that I added, but it sorted out all that. Um, and honestly, that's frankly just close enough, uh, nearly perfect, really. So I'm gonna go ahead and say done. And so now that mask is applied. You can see that here. So if I click view mask, remember black conceals and white reveals. So what it's revealing in white is a negative dynamic contrast. So a smoothing, whereas it's concealing it where it's black. So it's not applying it to those areas. So I'm gonna click view again to hide that and go ahead and close that tool. And I'm done with that. And so it basically smoothed out the sky and the water. And then I was looking at it and the last thing I thought was like, you know, I like what I did with tone enhancer back here, but I, I don't know, I kind of like it a little bit more contrasting. Maybe I've done a little too much. So I actually, instead of going back to tone enhancer, I just went and got the curves tool. Curves is super powerful and amazing and all those kind of things. So if you're not familiar with curves, I definitely recommend learning how to use it. I'm gonna work with the tone curve here. So what I wanna do is, I think I'm gonna go in the mid-tones and just go slightly up. Um, and then in the kind of the mid-highlights area, I'm gonna go slightly up as well. And so that's kind of brightening kind of the middle uh, highlight areas. Uh, and this slightly brightened the mid-tone areas. And then the shadows are down here. And what I wanna do is just slightly darken them. It's basically creating more contrast. So if I turn this off, you can see a little bit flatter image, nicely balanced light, but, um, and I got that way because of what I did in Tone Enhancer. So I'm kind of undoing that. And I could go back to Tone Enhancer to make adjustments there, but I really thought, I'm gonna use curves. Um, and so I wanted to go ahead and get the curves tool. So here I've basically brightened some of the midtones and some of the middle highlights, and then I've darkened some of the middle shadows. So there it is without curves, and there it is with curves. Slightly more gentle overall look, even though it's a slightly higher contrast, but I think when you have that light so balanced, it doesn't quite look as believable to me that this is a nice, warm, kind of gentle sunset. Whereas when I add a little bit of this adjustment with the curves, it is kind of brightening some of the highlights and the midtones, darkening slightly some of the shadows, which I think kind of makes sense here. Um, the sun was out of frame way over there. And so, you, you know, you kind of expect the highlights to be a little bit brighter. So when they were a little bit flatter like that, it looked a little less appealing to me. I went in and added it with curves, but I could have gone back into Tone Enhancer and probably done some adjustments or maybe just turn that off entirely. In fact, let's just take a look. If I turn that, turn that off, there we go. So I actually don't like it like that. I like um, the combination of what I did with Tone Enhancer and then curves to add a little bit of extra contrast, but it's um, because of what I did in Tone Enhancer. If I didn't have that and just went to curves, you can see the highlights are not quite uh, the same color tone and they're also a bit brighter. Now, I think they're a little bit more balanced, so I'm kind of glad that I stacked those, but just keep in mind, you have different tools in on ones, uh, and on one, there's different ways, you know, as the old saying, there's like more than one way to skin a cat. You know, Tone Enhancer works great, Curves works great. You could also go back to develop and use some of the tools there. So lots of flexibility, lots of power, but if you look at my before and after, there it is before, very blue. Again, nothing wrong with it. I just felt like it kind of lacked pop, was kind of, uh, it was kind of boring, to be honest. I, I was kind of bored with it, and I wanted it to be a bit more of a pop, a warmer tone, and I like that. I actually might come back into photo filter, and in fact, I think I will do that. I think I might take this opacity down and see what that does. Yeah, I kind of like that. Maybe drop the opacity. Another great thing about on one is you can just go back in, and if you like what you did with the tool, like photo filter, but it's too much, instead of trying to figure out the amount or the saturation level, just drop the opacity, just pull that back a little bit. So I think that actually at 80 looks better than it does at 100. I think it was looking a little bit fake at 100, but I think at 80, I think, uh, you know, I think that's looking pretty good. So I'm gonna go with that. Again, the point is lots of power, lots of flexibility, but Photo Filter is great at adding that warm look. Tone Enhancer and Curves are great at helping you adjust the light. And Sunshine also is a great complement to that warm look. So there it is without Sunshine, and there it is with, I think, a nice pop overall. That's how I edited this photo, and let me show you the before and after. And you can see very blue and very just kind of blah. It's just too blue overall, not enough color. But I think now we've got a nice balanced look that's nice and warm in the right areas, um, and uh, I, I like it quite a bit. So 
That's the way I went about, in this video at least, uh, adjusting the color. Photo filters is very powerful. It's great for sunsets, blue hours, all those kind of things. I use it quite a bit. That's how this one went, my friends. Thanks for watching. I'll be back soon with more on one videos. If you haven't subscribed yet and like on one and want to learn more about it, feel free to subscribe. Uh, give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment and let me know what else I could cover in on one that would be important to you. Thanks for watching, my friends. I will catch you guys in the next video. You guys take care of yourselves and until then, adios.